let's pray and then we will get to the word of God. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, we want to praise you. And as we turn to your word, God, you speak to us. We want to hear your voice clearly so that we will come to know who you are. In knowing you, we will have life which is everlasting. We prepare our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, turn with me to Psalms 73. It's always a question among Christians. Why I am going through trouble? Why I have to suffer? Or people ask why bad things happen to good people. We always ask questions when something goes wrong, why me? When somebody, a wicked person, prospers, why, Lord, that person is going up? In Psalm 73, we exactly find the same thing from Esau. I especially want to read from verse 13. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generations of your children. When I brought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. God, I am coming to the church. God, I am reading your word. God, I am praying every day. I am giving offering. And I am serving in the church. I am worshipping in the church. I am preaching in the church. Then why me? Why? Because I am your child. I shouldn't have any problem. But whereas when I look at outside, they are all doing very well. They are all doing very well. You see verse 1. Truly God is good to Israel, to such as pure in heart. God is good. He is good all the time. But, look at verse 2. But as for me, my foot is slipped. My foot is slipping. I am going to fall down. I am having pain. My marriage is in problem. My health is problem. My job is problem. My ministry is in problem. But you are good. God, you are good. My foot is slipping. When I look at the prosperity of the wicked, 
kad es skatos uz ļaunu cilvēku laplāju. God, you are good. You are very good all the time. But when I look at this side, my foot is sleeping. My foot is sleeping. I am going to fall down. Why? I am looking at the prosperity of the wicked person. There is a person who tells lie he is doing well. There is a person who doesn't come to church, no problem for him. He is buying a new car. He is buying a new house. He is going for a holiday. He is putting Instagram. When I look at the Instagram, my stomach is churning. Look at this people. They are all going holiday. Here I can't pay the bill. I come to church. God, you are good. But I am not good. I didn't go for a holiday. You see the Instagram. You know, we always look at others and then we decide we are not happy. You look at verse 4. There are no pangs in their death, for their strength is firm. They are not troubled as other men, nor they have plagued any other men. Therefore pride serves them as their necklace, violence covers them like a garment, their eyes bulge with abundance, they have more than heart could wish, they scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression, they speak loftily, they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongues walk through the earth. <laughs> I have nothing. They have got everything. I come to church. I worship the Lord. But I am not happy. Why? Because I am looking at them. I am looking at the people. When I look at them, I feel I am not good. Because they, are, they have everything. They have no problem. They want a job, they get a job. They want to get married, they get married. They want a child, they get a child. Here we pray for years together, we don't get married. Years together we pray, we don't get a child. Years together we pray for a house, we don't get a house. They come, they get a house, they get married, they have a children, they've got everything. God, did I keep my heart in pure in vain? That is what Esab is asking the question. Why God, why? Why bad things happen to me? Why bad things not happen to them? Why good things happen to them? Why good things not happening to me? Esab is singing a song. Now turn to verse 17 in your Bible. Open your Bible and see this verse. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. 
until i went into the sanctuary of god then i understood their end until you see from god's view point you will not know why they are prospering until you come into god's presence you will not know why you are going through the difficulty when you look to god you will see what god is doing when you look around the side you will get discouraged and when you look inside you will get depressed because what happens is when you go through a difficulty first thing what you will do is you will self introspect yourself you know immediately what satan will bring on satan satan yeah will bring something on satan some hypothesis this is because you did that that's why god is punishing you on satan's hypothesis or malosa the pain that you is very opposite to the other soul then you will start crying that is that around you come to church god is good tears are rolling crying 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 because you look at outside and then you will start look inside you will get depressed so what you must do is you must look to god god allows you to go through some difficulty God purposefully allows you to go through difficulty so that you will lean on him not on yourself. God will let you walk through wilderness. then only you will know who you are and also you will know who god is you know turn with me to isaiah chapter 43 in isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 it says But now thus says the Lord who created you O Jacob and who formed you O Israel fear not I have redeemed you I have called you by your name you are mine Peter responds Peter says the Lord who created us O Jacob and who made us Israel Nebis God who created Jacob and who formed Israel Jacob means he is a fraud cheater Jacob meaning is cheater he cheats Israel is one who is blesser prince blesser God forms a blesser out of a cheat listen to this whenever god changes somebody's name he never calls him with the old name kadhi smile ka gawar nishkar nesa usto tuwa 
He changes Abraham, Abraham into Abraham. Sarai, Sarah. He never calls the old name. But there are two people who always God uses the old name as well as the new name. In the Old Testament, this is Jacob and Israel. In the New Testament, it's Simon and Peter. God says you Peter, but still Simon is inside of you. Here he says, I changed you to Israel, but still you have a Jacob inside of you. And then he says, fear not. Don't worry, fear, don't fear. Fear not. I have redeemed you that I have bought you for a price because you belong to somebody I have redeemed you now you are mine when I created you you are mine when I created Jacob or Israel, you are mine. But you had gone into bondage. I have redeemed you. Now you are mine. For God to create you, it costs less. But God to redeem you, it costs a higher price. God created Adam and Eve, we were all born. God took the mud and he breathed on it, Adam was born. To redeem, God has to come down as a man and he has to die on the cross to redeem us. Redemption is always expensive. God says, I have redeemed you. You are mine. Don't fear. Do not fear. You were Jacob. I found you Israel. I have redeemed you. Don't fear. You are mine. And then he says, when you pass through waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, I will be with you. What this verse doesn't say, what this verse doesn't say, I will tell you. It doesn't say, if you walk through waters. It doesn't say, if you go through fire. It says, when you, surely you will go through waters. Surely you will go through fire. But God says, I will be with you. He doesn't say, you don't go through waters. He doesn't say, you go through, you don't go through fire. He says, you will go through waters. He says, you will go through fire. But I will be with you. That is the promise from God. He doesn't say you will not go through difficulty. He doesn't say you will not go through fire. You will go through fire. You will be tested. But God will be with you. God will be with you. That's why he says don't fear first. You are mine. As I told you, redemption is expensive. God, He gave His Son. 
to redeem you do you think he will leave you hello hello just for a moment you think if i were god yes it is i have to redeem dagmar what would i say what would i do maybe i'll send a an angel what would the solution be yeah okay is i want him to redeem so i will give one angel if he is very important maybe i may give one cherubim yeah yeah sure it is it is sorry for this worship cherub but do you think you will give yourself to redeem somebody that you want to save like how that thing to redeem you each and every one of you god said i will go and die he saw abraham i want to redeem abraham i am willing to die on the cross if god has done that Yet Will he leave me inside the waters? Will he leave me inside the fire? No. There is a greater purpose. God has got a greater purpose in taking me there. If God is taking me through the waters, if God is taking me through the fire, that means there is a greater testimony is going to be come. That's why He is taking me. Because the same verse it says, the water will not overflow you. The water will not overflow you. In Joshua chapter three, Joshua, Israel people coming into the promised land. They have to cross the river Jordan. It was a harvest time. the river was flooding god tells them you take the ark of the covenant let the priest go and touch the water with their feet the water will stop what you would have said Lord please stop the water i will put my leg no doctor said i have to go through operation please stop. god clean heal me god i don't have a job please lord he says no you put your foot the water will not overflow it may be flooding you put your foot with the faith i will stop the water until you put the foot the water will not stop there are many christians they sit on this side of the river they cry they won't eat they call that fasting no that is not fasting that is disobedience and then the next phrase it says what does it says the fire you will not be burned you shall not be burned in daniel we see chapter 4 meshak satrak meshak abednego three of them on daniel ramata preshanodena we see the jekure was service king nebuchadnezzar tells them king nebuchadnezzar sakriya heat up the furnace seven times higher not the normal fire seven times more 
There are people coming to put them into the fire, they are dying. What is our prayer? Lord, no fire. You remove Nebuchadnezzar nature. We don't want Nebuchadnezzar nature. We don't want the fire. Let the fire go away. No, 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 no. no. God says, I will put you in the fire. When the soldiers are trying to push them in the fire, they are dying. All three of them were pushed into the fire. What did they see? They pushed three people. They see four people walking around. Hello, they pushed three people. Four people walking in the fire. Who is the fourth person? The Son of God. And when they come out, Nebuchadnezzar nature comes and sees them. Is your, is your dress is solid? Your hair is fine? No smoke smell. My brothers and sisters, you will be tested. You will go through waters. You will go through fires. God never said when you become a Christian there will not be any problem. But he said the opposite. If you become a Christian, you will have more problems. Hallelujah. <laughs> we want blessing, Pastor. No, that's what the way Bible says. But what the Bible says is, He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be with you. When God is with you, there is no one come near you. You may be thinking that you are going through problem. You may be thinking you are going through trouble. But then God will make your life so wonderful testimony. There is no testimony without a test. We all want to share a testimony. But we don't want a test. <laughs> you send your children to school. If they don't keep a test and they just promote from one class to another class, will you send your children to that school? You will say, This is not good. But when you come to church, when you come to God, when God gives you a test paper, you say this is not good. <laughs> you know what? God always tests you and it is not the same test again. Yeah. No same test. You go to year 6. The school will give you year 6 test. When you go to year 7. They will give you year 7 test. When you go to year 10. They will give you year 10 test. But when we come to God. We tell God. Do me the same test. Don't change the paper. How it is possible? God will change the paper. First test will be easy. Second test will be little difficult. Third test will be little more difficult. When only the test will stop. 
You want to good you want to hear the good news? Until you learn, you will be tested. It will never stop. Until you learn, God will be keep testing you. God cannot use you unless He tests you. You buy a car. You buy a car. When you buy a the when the company makes a car, before they give it outside, they do so many tests. They will test when what happens when you crash 10 mile speed. What happens when you crash on 30 mile speed? What happens when you crash on 60 mile speed? They will do so many tests and after that only they will apply to the government for a clearance. Then only the car comes to the market. The same way, if God wants to put you before others, He needs to test you. He needs to send you through the waters. He needs to send you through the fire. As I told you, lot of people sitting this side of the cross and then crying. They don't walk by faith. There are things happen in our life, we can't reason it out. You don't understand when you go through the difficulty. You don't understand why you are going through what you are going through until the journey is over. So what are you supposed to do? Trust Him and walk. Because I have redeemed you. You are mine. I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. No, I am with you until end of ages. So what I should do, I should trust him. And I have to go. You take the bus. Do you go to the driver? Show me your license. How long you've been driving the bus? How many accidents you have made? You don't ask those questions. Why? Because you trust the bus company. You go to the plane. You don't go to the pilot and ask, show me your license. I want to see how many hours you have flown. You don't ask questions. Why? You trust the company. Same way, when God leads you some turbulence, don't question God. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Don't question God. God, do you have an experience on this? There are a lot of people who will come and tell me, I have got a disease which is very rare. Nobody has got it. I said, Welcome. God has got a greater purpose. Yeah. Yeah. If everybody has got a problem, you also got a problem. You don't have a special. You are special. That's why you have got a special problem. So special problem will have a special testimony. 
So when God takes you through the tough path, you trust Him and you look at Him and walk. Because He is the one who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Because Hebrews 12 2 says, looking unto him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I don't understand. There are things happen in my life. And I don't have to understand. There are many things I don't know. Because with my understanding, I understand very little. God knows how to run this universe. He is the one who created everything. He knows everything about me. And why I should try to teach him or tell him? We try to advise God. God, can you do this? Do it this way? Hello? Hello? A woman getting pregnant. Suddenly what happens? The patient does not Your head is spinning. You are vomiting. And you go to the doctor. The doctor says, Congratulations. You are very happy. Whereas, when sometime other than pregnancy, when the head spins, you are getting worried. But this time, when the doctor says, Congratulations, you are happy. Why? Because you have seen somebody else is getting pregnant and they have delivered a baby. Or maybe you have gone through the same experience. Same way, when you go through difficulty, when you go through fire, you have to learn from others, which is there in the Bible, or you have to have your own history with God. You have to look back in your life and see how God has been good to you. How God has led you so far. And if you know that, immediately you will say, Thank you, Lord. Because in my life in the past, there are so many situations, I can see the hand of God. I can see the blessings of God. I can see the guidance of God. I can see God has protected me. And today you are alive. You are in the church. Itself is a great testimony. God has protected you and preserved your life. There are thousands of people died in COVID. There are so many people who have died. But God has protected you. And you are alive. And you are breathing. It's a big miracle. That's a greatest miracle. You are alive today. Sometimes we fail to see. We always look at the unanswered prayer from God. That is why we always have to have a cross with us. One hand, God has healed me. He delivered me from all the sickness. But the other hand, I have a sickness. 
I have a pain. What do I do? I lift both my hands and praise God. Lord, you say that I am healed. But there is a pain. There is a sickness. But I choose to praise you. That's a cross I make. That's a cross I make every day. Because you will always have something which God has not answered. But the other side of it, God will take care of all your needs. All your needs, God will provide. You will never go hungry. You will never go without clothes. You will never go without a house. All the three things God will provide for you. Never ever He will forsake you. When you have come to God, God will look after your basic needs, never. Nobody can say that, no, God has not provided for me. In Psalm 65, he says, he opens his arm and feeds all the living things on the planet. Psalm 65. He feeds every living thing. That's why in Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 he says, Do not worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. What you eat, what you drink, what you wear. And God gives two examples. Look at the birds. Look at the grass. I look after them. Don't you think you are better than them? And then he says, seek me first. I will add all these things to you. So when you go through waters, when you go through fire, seek him. Don't question God. I don't understand. But I can tell you one thing. God is good. And he will provide for it. And he will look after. And he will never forsake me. And he will be with me. Always he will be with me. And he will look after me. And his presence will be with me. And he will make everything good. Enemy brings trouble. Enemy brings trouble. But God turns that into good. I can tell you scores of testimony that how the evil came upon some people how God turned them into good and how they become a blessing to many many people there are so many testimonies I can tell you so my brothers and sisters you may be lost your loved ones Maybe you lost your husband. Maybe you lost your wife. Maybe you lost your mother or a father. But I am telling you, God is good. God is good. And God will make that also very beautiful testimony. You can ask me. How I lost my mother, I lost my husband, how can that be good? Today it may look, it is not good. It may be the enemy has brought it. 
God will turn it to good. After a few years, you will turn back and you say, that was a good thing happened to me. There are many, many things. So what do we do? Do we look at the people and get discouraged? Or, or do I look inside and get depressed? Or I look to God and run my race? You know, when you look at the others, you will feel they are doing well. But they will look at you think you are doing that. It is always the case. Because we are looking at in our own limited eyes. Because we don't know the full picture. That is why in Psalm 73 verse 17. Until I went into the presence of God. Our dear brother said, Draw deeper, closer to him. When the problem comes, when the trouble comes, don't run away from God. Run to God. Draw deeper, closer relationship with God, I don't understand. But I choose to praise you. God, I don't understand. I choose to thank you. God, I don't understand. It is painful. But I am going to thank you. Thank you Lord for the pain. Thank you Lord for the problem. Thank you Lord that I think I may not come out of it. But you know the best. And you will always love to do good for me. Because I am yours. You have redeemed me. In Romans chapter 8, 32 it says, If God did not withhold his only son, when he withhold any good things from you. My church. What problem you are going through? Maybe some of you are inside the water. Or maybe some of you inside the fire. Or maybe some of you are just let into the water and the fire. Or maybe some of you are just got out of one and going into the another. I want to tell you one thing. God is good. Look to Him. Focus on Him. Fix your eyes on Him. And open your hands and open your mouth and thank Him for it. Praise Him for who He is. And God will do mighty things in Now I want you all to stand and we are going to praise God. That all the bondages to be broken. And we don't have to pray for anyone, everyone. I don't have to pray. God will touch you. In your pain. In your, pain, in your trouble. There is only one thing breaks open every bondage, every door is praises. And I want you all to uh, praise Him, thank Him for who He is. Don't worry about anybody. You tell God, thank you Lord for the problem. Thank you 
Thank you, Lord, for the troubles. Thank you, Lord, for all the difficulty. In your own place, in your own mouth, our language. You just open your mouth and tell God. God, I want to thank you. God, I want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Lord, because you are good. You are good all the time, O Lord. And I know you will do beautiful things, O Lord. You will make my life wonderful. I know, God, I want to thank you. I praise you, Lord. God, you are holy. You are holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be your name. Let your name be glorified. Let you alone be glorified, O Lord. Let your name be magnified, O Lord. We praise you, Lord, who you are. God, who created the heaven and earth, O Lord. Lord, you created everything, O Lord. God, you created me, O Lord. I am yours, O Lord. You redeemed me, O Lord. You are mine and you belong to me, O Lord. And I belong to you, O Lord. So thank you, thank you, thank you.